Hello everybody, Mobius1 here, bringing you the long-awaited, based on all the comments and DMs I keep getting on Discord, reaction to Season 2 of The Mandalorian. I know I'm getting a little bit of a late start. There's already two episodes out, and the third episode's going to be coming out this Friday. Um, today's Monday. So hopefully I have this episode done. This I'm sure this episode will be posted before the third episode is released. Um, maybe not the second episode. It's going to take me a little bit to catch up, but hopefully I do catch up. I plan on catching up. For those of you that watched my Season 1 reactions, I'm going to be doing things the exact same way for Season 2, which is I'm going to be posting an edited highlight version here on YouTube for everybody. But if you do want to watch my full reaction, which is my reaction from the very beginning of the episode to the very end, unedited, you can find that over on my Patreon for only $1 a month. You can become a patron on Patreon. It'll get you access to, obviously, the full reactions to this, and also one week early access to any of my other weekly video series which at this moment is only Star Wars Squadrons, but I do plan on doing more stuff, obviously, in the future. As you can tell, I am not at my normal setup. I am actually out of town on a laptop right now, which is why the audio quality isn't so great. I'm using this expensive piece of hardware instead of my normal expensive piece of hardware. Um, also, I do have, well... There are some dogs running around here somewhere, so if uh, for those of you watching the full reaction, you might see some dog aggro at some point. Hopefully I'll be able to edit that out for the YouTube version, but we'll see. Also, uh, it's been a year since I've done these reaction videos, and what I do remember from last season is they take a lot of time, a lot of work to get the, the edited versions posted, um, especially considering YouTube's copyright policies and stuff. So I have learned a lot last season, but it's still probably going to, it might take me a couple tries to get episodes uploaded, which is why I don't want to promise that I'll have episodes posted on every, on a certain day of the week, like I did last time. Um, I'm sorry. They'll, they'll be up when they're up. Um, I just, I can't predict whether or not my edits are going to appease the YouTube gods. But with that out of the way, I can't wait to get started. I've already been slightly spoiled on the first episode based on some comments that were posted on some old Galaxies videos, which I think I know what they're referencing in the comments, but we'll we'll check it out after we watch the, the, uh, the actual episode and we'll see what those comments were referencing. But um, yeah, okay, so for those of you watching the full reaction on Patreon, I am starting at zero seconds, and we're going to do a countdown from three, two, one, go. Here we go, three, two, one, go. There's been a lot of rumors about like Bo-Katan and Ahsoka being in this season. I don't know if any of those are justified or if they're, you know, legit or not, but it's kind of exciting. We might see that. We might see Boba Fett. I have no idea. There they are. No delay whatsoever. I just throw them on screen right at the beginning. I like it. Where is this now? It's another thing I remember from season one is they very rarely told us where they where we were. A lot of graffiti. Reminds me of Sabine from Rebels. Ooh, Sabine was Mandalorian, too. I wonder if Sabine's going to be in this. It's nice. We're seeing Vibro axes for the first time. I've been quested to bring him to his kind. If I can locate other Mandalorians, they can help guide me. Mm, okay. Well, I'll bet you the information you seek. The Discomorian's going to die within the next minute and a half. And all you have to put up in exchange is your shiny Beskar armor. Yeah, that ain't happening. Okay. Didn't see that coming so early. <laughs> Ooh. Look at him run. Ooh. Nasty. What I was going to say earlier is that a lot of those aliens in the crowd were all new species, but I, I appreciate seeing more of the um, previously established races, like the Twi'leks, the Zabrax. Hopefully we see like a Mon Cal or something later. But you must give me your word that you won't kill me. I promise you will not die by my hand. 
Those are very specifically chosen words. The man do I know of is on Tatooine. The city of Mos Pelgo. I swear it by the Gatra. Mos Pelgo? Cut me down! That wasn't part of the deal. All right, so we're going back to Tatooine. They said that there's a Mandalorian on Tatooine. Could it be Boba Fett? So Mos Pelgo, though, that's a new city name. Oh, hey! So this is this is Isley, then. Why would he go back to Isley? Unless he's going to leave Baby Yoda with her. I wonder where Mos Pelgo is. You know we don't like droids. May as well let them have at it. The crest needs a good once over. Hmm. <laughs> I like this girl. Huh, looks like it remembers me. How much do you want for it? Just kidding, but not really. <laughs> where is Moss Pelgo? It's not on any of the maps. Oh, he doesn't know where it is. R5! Bring the map of Tatooine! Oh, shoot! Wow. It's the R5 from A New Hope! Because the little thing blew. You got Mos Eisley, Mos Espa, and up around this region, Mos Pelgo. That's awesome. It's interesting that they showed um, Moss Espa to the south of Moss Eisley. This is like way over the top nerdy shit, but in Star Wars Galaxies, Moss Espa was northwest of Eisley. Now, obviously, where cities are located on a map in a fictional universe is not very important. Just an interesting fact that they've done so many references to older Star Wars stuff, but that was actually backwards from what was previously established. Not that Galaxies is canon or anything, anyway. I like this track. Getting some real Firefly vibes, though. Can you imagine living out in the middle of nowhere and just seeing, like, a Mandalorian ride up? I wonder if they even know who a Mandalorian... Like, what a Mandalorian is. Can I help you? I'm looking for a Mandalorian. Can you describe him? Someone who looks like me. <laughs> Your marshal wears Mandalorian armor. See for yourself. Oh, shit. That can't be Boba Fett, though, right? No. That's... Wait a minute. Is that actually his armor? You here, stranger. We quake. Two snorts of Spotska. Okay, it's not Boba Fett. The voice is different. Is that Jodo Cast? Huh. Jodo Cast was somebody from the Expanded Universe that assumed Boba Fett's role after Boba Fett... Well fell into the Sarlacc. I was going to say died. But every after everyone thought that Boba Fett died, there was a character named Jodo Cass who, like, basically did identity theft and took all the fame and glory that Boba Fett had, had earned. I met a real Mandalorian. Heard stories. I know you're good at killing. And probably none too happy to see me wearing this hardware. Okay, well, he's obviously not really Mandalorian if he took the helmet off, right? Who are you? I'm Cobb Vanth. Marshal of Mos Pelgo. Okay, it's not Jodo Cast. Where did you get the armor? Buy it off some Jawas. It is Boba Fett's armor. Hand it over. We gonna do this in front of the kid? <laughs> You've seen worse. <laughs> the hell rumbles like that on Tatooine? Is that like a herd of Bantha? A herd of crate dragons? So that was the spoiler, the somewhat spoiler that I noticed. Somebody made a comment about crate dragons on one of my Galaxies videos. So I think this episode's got something to do with a crate dragon, especially since we're back on Tatooine. That would make sense. But I don't think a crate dragon would make the ground rumble like this. What? A Sarlacc? Not a Sarlacc. What the heck is this? What the heck was that? Was that supposed to be a Kray Dragon? Thanks to this armor, I've been able to protect this town from bandits and sand people. But a Kray Dragon is too much for me to take on alone. It is! Help me kill it, I'll give you the armor. Yo, it's like Anakin's pod racer engine. Oh, 
Well, of course. You want to tell me what's going on? Chill. I want to kill the Kray Dragon too. Hmm. It's gonna be like a giant cave, right? Yep. Yo, that's awesome. This is just like the first Knights of the Old Republic. So in that game, they laid a bunch of mines at the cave entrance and then baited him out. They feed the dragon to make it sleep longer. <laughs> it's like the goat in Jurassic Park. The crate dragon doesn't want to feed, it wants to hunt. I'm so confused. I mean, it, it looks like one, but I've never seen them go underground like that. That's so weird. What are the bones? That's the crate dragon. And those little rocks? That's us. It's not to scale. It's to scale. That's more like it. I volunteered your village. <laughs> We're gonna get another, like, training the villagers how to fight montage, like we did in season one. We can't take on the crate alone. And the sand people are willing to help. I know these people. They are brutal. But so is the Dune Sea. They are raiders. It's true. But they also keep their word. They will stand by our side in battle and vow never to raise a blaster against this town until one of you breaks the peace. Which will last like a day. Yeah, but like, what are they going to do? Hey! What are you doing? That's an explosive! What are you trying to blow the whole place up? There we go. Okay, so those are explosives. Maybe they are maybe they are going the whole KOTOR route and they're gonna bury explosives. But see, how are you gonna hit it? Because if I remember correctly, a, a crate dragon's only weak point is like its belly, it's underneath, which is why in KOTOR they placed mines. But if the thing is underground, how are you supposed to hit it from below? That doesn't make any sense. Unless we're gonna actually see it above ground. Somehow? Why don't you just have it eat the Bantha with all the explosives on it? Look at that Bantha in the background with all those bombs strapped to it. Just have it eat that Bantha and blow it up. It says it's sleeping. Yeah. If we listen carefully, we can hear it breathing. The Tuscans say the belly is the only weak spot. Hey, I was right. So we have to hit it from below. But how? Those harpoons? We have to get it angry enough to charge. They're going to, like, harpoon it out of the ground. Once it's far enough out and the belly is above the explosives, you hit the detonator. I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> well, I mean, why don't they just shoot into the cave or something? I mean, that is sick looking. Ooh, right in the gum. That is awesome looking. Going back in. Uh, yeah, that ain't gonna help. <laughs> oh, they're throwing grenades. I'm like, what are you throwing? Is it coming out of the ground? There we go. What? Since when do crate dragons spew acid? Yeah, there's no way that worked. I don't think it's dead. Me neither. Me neither. Whoa, how'd it get up there? Oh, come on. Come on, baby Yoda. Save the day. Oh, that's awesome. Shoot it in the eye! Thing can move fast. Wait a minute, look at all those explosives on that Bantha. Why didn't they bury those? No. They're really gonna do what I said? You don't have that detonator? Take it. You're gonna take care of the child. What are you gonna do? I don't know, but wish me luck. <laughs> Boba Fett's jetpack is always getting hit and taking the the owner somewhere. Run! Oh. Okay. 
is he gonna is he gonna men in black it and like blow it up from, well obviously he's gonna blow it up from the inside but how's he get out especially if it's underground that doesn't make much sense oh he tased it there you go oh he's all covered in acid damn so like where's its legs and stuff though like that doesn't it's not a crate dragon, that's like a snake. Or like a dune worm. I gave him some meat. This was well earned. It was my pleasure. Oh, and you tell your people I wasn't the one that broke that. <laughs> hey! Crate pearl. Thing is massive though. Why is it so big? Is that the end? Okay. That was kind of cool. Oh shit! Wait a second, hold up, hold up. We gotta watch the credits and see if they put his name in there. Was that Tamara Morrison? Hold up, wait a minute. Was that really him? They wouldn't even credit him, would they? They would keep that as, they can't keep that a secret. Here we go, wait, Pedro Pascal. In order of appearance. So he's going to be the very last name. Dude, hold on, wait. There it is! Tomorrow Morrison! Holy crap! That's actually him! Oh, dude. Okay. I gotta watch to the end here. Let's see. Okay, so there we have it. That was episode... Well, technically episode 9, but episode 1 of season 2 of The Mandalorian... Good way to start off the season, I would like to say. Um, especially with that cliffhanger ending. Where do we even start? Um, let's let's start at the end and talk about that. That was Tamara Morrison, for those of you who don't know, played Django Fett in uh, episode two, Attack of the Clones, which obviously is Boba Fett because Django Fett was the host for the clone army. Um, and Boba Fett is an unaltered clone of Django Fett. So if Tamara Morrison is running around in the deserts of Tatooine, that is an older Boba Fett. It's plain and simple. I would like to go ahead and just jump to the conclusion that my um, my predictions in season one of that person who walks up on the dead assassin at the end of, I don't remember what episode number, episode four or five or something like that from season one, um, whatever episode was on Tatooine in season one, at the very end of the episode, we see Boots walk up to the dead assassin lady. Um, I had predicted that that was Boba Fett, and I'm going to go ahead and confirm for myself that that's who that was, because obviously Boba Fett's still wandering around the deserts of Tatooine. So yeah, I wonder what he's doing. So that's really cool. Um, even if we never see him i mean obviously we're gonna see more of him at some point somehow but even if we don't just the fact that he's there like maybe we don't leave tatooine though because the the whole reason oh wait no we might leave tatooine i was gonna say the whole reason we came to tatooine in the first place was to find a mandalorian but it turns out that the mandalorian that he thought he was looking for was the marshal who's not a mandalorian he just had the armor so i guess there doesn't seem there isn't actually a reason for um for our Mandalorian to stay on Tatooine, even though there is a Mandalorian there. So let's go back and talk about the crate Dragon then. And actually, I'm going to look something up real quick. Okay, so I can't actually put this in front of my, or behind my web camera, but here's an article that I found on Wikipedia on the Greater Crate Dragon. This is going back to Legends material, so this is pre-Disney. Uh, that says the greater crate dragon was a subspecies of crate dragon that was both rarer and larger than the canyon crate and its relative. Uh, if we look or relatives, if we look at characteristics, greater crates were massive, growing to 100 meters or more. They required 10 legs to support their bulk. Despite their size, greater crates were rarely encountered because they spent long periods of time literally swimming through the sand. Greater crates were known to actually prey upon sarlaccs. Though they are more commonly, they more commonly hunted banthas. Similar to their kin, the greater crate dragon developed pearls inside their gizzard, 
called Crate Dragon Pearls. However, these were much larger and more valuable than standard Crate Dragon Pearls. So, and we got a picture of it here. Yeah, so I guess they didn't take liberties in making this weird underground dragon thing. Though it doesn't say anything about it spitting acid. Uh, I will say that. But yeah, so I guess I learned something new today, too. There's a, there's a great dragon in old legends that actually did swim through the sand like that. Go figure. And that explains why the pearl at the end was so big. Um, Just overall, like... I'm I'm still amazed at the quality of it. It's honestly, the Mandalorian is hands down the best Star Wars to come uh, since Disney took over. And it looks like season two is going to be just as good, if not better than season one. Uh, there's so much fan service, but it doesn't feel fan servicey. Like the uh, the R5 droid having the the scoring around the little red patch where the the thing popped off his head in episode four letting us know that that's the same r5 unit which is in moss eisley which is nearby um calling out the cities that we know moss eisley moss espa um the pod racer engine for the for the speeder bike was kind of a neat callback uh yeah there's just it's just it's enjoyable for anybody, but for someone like me who like really dives into the lore and knows a lot of the references and stuff, like it's just it's so much cooler uh, seeing the V thirty five land speeder, which is um, was also a vehicle that you could drive in galaxies, but also I think some common or it's probably more commonly known as like the Lars family land speeder uh, that was also in episode four. Um, I I can't wait to just keep watching this and see what other kind of references or what other kind of cameos we get. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this. Other than that, the, I think really those are the two major highlights. Um, well, actually, no, we know now that Armando has Boba Fett's armor, which is interesting. I'm not sure what he's going to do with that. He might just hold it. I don't know. What if we get a team up? Maybe in the future, like our Mandalorian and Boba Fett actually join forces somewhere somehow. But yeah, all right. I mean, that's that's really going to be it. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say. I'm just really excited to finally watch this. Oh, wait, I forgot. Let's go look at those comments that people left on my YouTube vids. Okay, let's see. Somebody said to come to what time? 27 seconds. Somebody go inside of it and explode out with a grenade. So we're at 1920. This is a video of us fighting a crate dragon in Star Wars Galaxies right there. Somebody go inside of it and explode out. That oh with a grenade. <laughs> um Yeah, can we see who said that? Trixie Vow. I do not remember you Trixie, I'm sorry. It looks like I was grouped up with a bunch of different random people. Um Mandalorian writers, yes. Somebody replied, just watched the episode and went here and saw that. I'm dying. Uh, yeah, see, taking on the Crate Dragon SWG was the best part. I'm sure the Mandalorian Season 2 episode will bring many to this site. Did anyone get the Crate Pearl? Um, when was this video posted? Six years ago, March 19th, 2014. I think, if anything, that confirms that the Disney writers are using my YouTube videos as inspiration so thank you guys i will uh, expect to see my name credited in the credits at some point and uh, i will also be looking in the mail for my paycheck just kidding i know I'll, I'll never get it though what i would like is actually the ability to use star wars copyrighted material in my youtube videos without getting a copyright claim um, if you could at least give me that i would be happy but all right, that's going to be all for now, guys. Hopefully you found this reaction entertaining. I will be watching episode two uh, very soon, probably later this week. Um, so if I can, my goal is to get episode two posted maybe this weekend, and then I'll be able to react to episode three um, either Friday or over the weekend and have that posted sometime early next week so that I'm caught up for episode four. We'll see how it goes. But that's going to be all for now. Thank you guys for watching. Mobius One here. Don't forget the full reactions available over on Patreon if you want. Links in the video description. But until then, I'll see you next time.